Russia has unexpectedly cut its oil production below its allowed levels. Mexico's oil exports plummet to their lowest level since 2019. Canadian Cold Lake oil is trading at its narrowest discounted West Texas Intermediate in nearly a year. Heightened tensions in the Middle East once again loom, potentially igniting a series of retaliatory attacks across the region. This confluence of events is accelerating an oil rally just as the U.S. summer driving season approaches, threatening to propel Brent crude, the global benchmark, to $100 for the first time in almost two years. The last instance when oil hit these levels, President Joe Biden was actively releasing millions of barrels per week from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This surge is intensifying inflation worries and complicating the deliberations over interest rate cuts by central banks. Today, let's look at the prospects for oil prices going forward and what it means for the markets. I'm Philip Peterson, Chief Investment Strategist at IG Wealth Management. Join me each week as we discuss the trends dominating the investment landscape. It's the week of April 15th, so listen on as we navigate the living market. First, let's address the main aspect we get asked about. What about war? The impact of geopolitical events on oil prices over the medium term obviously depends on their influence on oil supply, demand, and inventory levels. But the X factor is OPEC's policy responses to these events. Given OPEC's current high spare capacity, the risk is more likely to come from their desire to increase production regardless of their ability. As we saw lately, some producers feel that high prices are more important to them than strong production. Several factors are important to consider when it comes to geopolitical influence on the price of oil. First, there's the reassessment of policy risks associated with oil production from countries under sanctions, like Iran. Given that Iran has now launched hundreds of drones and ballistic missiles into Israel, it feels less likely to see further integration of this country into world trade over the near term. This in turn lowers available crude to world markets. Facing that potential decrease, will there be willingness and ability of core OPEC plus producers to ramp up production, especially if there are supply disruptions in key regions? Well, nothing is less certain. Another complex element is determining how much of the geopolitical risk premium is already reflected in the current crude oil price. This premium, which investors require as a buffer against the risk of geopolitical events cutting the oil supply, is notoriously tricky to pin down. Furthermore, any spikes in oil prices due to increased geopolitical risks could be tempered by producers deciding to hedge their exposure by selling their production forward. It's important to not get carried away here, as there are definitely two sides to the coin. If speculation leads to an exaggeration in risk premium, producers are likely to step in and use this to hedge risk on the other side of the trade. Beyond geopolitics, what about demand? Looking forward, the demand looks to remain strong and might even see an uptick if the global economy continues to rebound. So if we are indeed looking at higher oil prices into the summer, what could this mean for the markets? Canadian stocks are a major beneficiary, especially considering the Canadian dollar's current weakness. Canadian oil exports could prop up GDP and turbocharge stock returns, even as the Canadian consumer is struggling to pay off debt. Historically, since 1980, a rise in oil prices of 50% or more on a year-over-year -year basis leads Canadian stocks to returns of 17% on a year-over-year -year basis on average. We are almost at these levels already, as Canadian Western Select has risen from 52 to 72 since the beginning of the year. Elevated oil prices are also bad for inflation, though, obviously. The impact of energy costs is felt in most segments of CPI composition, as it impacts shipping costs as well as gas prices. Anything that makes central banks hesitant to cut rates will be bad news for both world stock markets and bond markets over the short term. Higher oil prices remain a tax on the consumer, and overall, just not a good thing for the global economy. Sometimes we get asked, well, why even own Canadian stocks if all the growth is in the U.S.? Well, diversification is more than just a buzzword. And in times like these, if oil prices keep ramping up, Canada and Canadian stocks could prove their worth to a portfolio this year. I'm Philip Peterson, and this has been The Living Markets. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to rate it or share it with colleagues and friends. It will help other like-minded individuals find us. Thanks for listening.
The content of this podcast, including facts, views, opinions, and recommendations, is not to be used or construed as investment advice and is not an offer or an invitation to buy or sell any security. The content of this podcast should not be relied upon for any purpose, and IG Wealth Management is not responsible for any reliance upon it. This podcast includes forward-looking information that reflects our current expectations or forecasts of future events. Forward-looking information is subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that could cause actual results to differ materially from expressed herein. Our views are subject to change based on market conditions. Commissions, fees, and expenses may be associated with mutual fund investments. Read the prospectus before investing. Mutual funds are not guaranteed, values change frequently, and past performance may not be repeated.